Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. Also, if you're on Facebook, look for the Daily Bible Podcast community, and it's just in the groups section. Look under groups and put in Daily Bible Podcast. We would love to have you join us there. And also, if you listen like on the Apple pot platform, on the podcast platform, or whatever podcast, go to that platform and rate us. Give us one, two, three, four, five stars, whatever, whatever you feel we need. Um, And then also drop a comment because that helps spread the word and encourage more people to get in the word and, um, and be the hands and feet of Jesus. That's what we say at the closing of every program, be the hands and feet of Jesus. That's what we wanted you to do. So go rate us today. Okay. So today we are reading Proverbs 20, 21, and also the first 16 verses of Proverbs 22. So in Proverbs here, we are seeing some repetition. There is repetition, almost like we are going in circles. Themes keep popping up, words like listen and understand, be wise. There's also labels like fools and the wise. We also hear things like soak it in, listen, put it into action, and even in some instance instances, hold back. But whatever you do, here's what you need to do. You need to take it to heart because in Proverbs 20, we are seeing a few things to avoid. And so we need to take these things to heart. We need to think through these things. So in Proverbs 20, we are, we are told to avoid alcohol, avoid fighting. Um, we're told to be a person who is loyal to their friends and look for loyal friends. We are told to walk with integrity. And then there's this little a ah, great little reminder in verse nine, who can say I have cleansed my heart and I am pure and free from sin. Mm-hmm. And that's a really good reminder where Solomon and all these wise men who wrote Proverbs, they knew who God truly was. Who can say that? I mean, we all need to come before God and confess our sin. We are not free from sin. Of course, now we know that Christ has made us free from sin. And that is a good, good thing. There's also this little gem in verse 21. An inheritance obtained too early in life is not a blessing in the end. And I know that if my parents had given me my my inheritance, actually, my dad says, you're not going to get an inheritance. We're blowing the money now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm like, what inheritance? Yeah. <laughs> and so, but if I, if there was an inheritance to be had and I'd received it 10, 15, 20 years ago, it would be gone. It probably would be gone. I would have been like, Hey, so it's, it's just kind of interesting to read some of these, these proverbs in here or these probabilities, these proverbs, because it's like, Oh Yeah. That's true. An inheritance obtained too early in life is not a blessing in the end. And then again, we hear how God sees all. He sees all. The Lord, Lord's light penetrates the human spirit, exposing every hidden motive. And then we come to every retired person's favorite verse. The gray hair of experience is the splendor of the old. That's right. It's just their wisdom shining on their heads, the gray hair, which mm-hmm. I have a lot of, I'm getting a lot more gray hair. So, yeah, me too. Ugh. But it reminds me of that, that inheritance obtained too early in life is not a blessing at the end. It reminds me of the prodigal son story. That, mm-hmm. that guy yeah. took his inheritance and blew it on all the yeah. bad things and it did not lead him to, to good, a good life. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's amazing. All these things apply. Mm -hmm. So Proverbs 21 emphasizes the importance of righteousness and humility, diligence, and wisdom in all aspects of life. It warns against arrogance, unethical behavior, and the pursuit of wealth at the expense of others. And it encourages readers to seek the Lord's guidance and act with integrity. Like we've heard all these things before, um, but I love these familiar themes. Proverbs 21.3 says, the Lord is more pleased when we do what is right and just 
than when we offer him sacrifices. Now, when I read this, I'm like, ding, ding, ding. I remember this story from 1 Samuel 15, 20 through 22. And this is when Saul, remember, uh, mm. Samuel told him to go and um, to destroy all the Amalekites and Saul didn't. And he says, but I did obey the Lord. I carried out the mission he gave me. I brought back King Agag, but I destroyed everyone else. Then my troops brought back the best of the sheep and goats and cattle and plunder to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. Uh, Because remember, he was told to destroy everything. But Samuel replied, what is more pleasing to the Lord, your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to his voice? Listen, Mm. obedience is better than sacrifice and submission is better than offering the fat of rams. So I love that. It's just summed up in Proverbs 21, 3. The Lord is more pleased when we do what is right than just when we offer him sacrifices. And then these Proverbs made me smile. Uh, Proverbs 21, 9, it's better to live alone in the quarter, corner of an attic than with a quarrelsome wife in a lovely home. <laughs> also, Proverbs 21, 19, it's better to live alone in the desert than with a quarrelsome, complaining wife. <laughs> and back then, remember, the roof of the house in those countries were flat and plain and habitable, but they were exposed to all the weather. So he was basically saying it's better to be sunburnt or get rained on than deal with that type of wife. Ooh, better to be sunburned or rained on. <laughs> you know, one thing I'm seeing here is that avoiding sin takes careful attention and thoughtful planning. And, and that is something, preparation, we've seen that throughout the Old Testament so far. There is preparation. And and Solomon's reminding us that we need to avoid sin. And that is going to be, we need to put up these boulders in our life, you know, because avoiding sin doesn't happen on accident and sin doesn't happen on accident. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, it's not always an oops. We saw that in, in the laws. I mean, remember the laws, there were punishment for even the accidental sins. And so we need to be careful and we need to be vigilant. And in Proverbs, we are reminded what helps us build these hedges and these fences to keep us looking to our true North to Jesus. And the prudent person foresees danger and takes precautions, but the simpleton goes blindly on and suffers the consequences. And so all of Proverbs is saying, take heed, take heed, be wise, but also prepare because wisdom is about preparing and expecting what could happen and saying nah, we're going to go this way and we're going to keep those hedges in place. Hey friends, we're excited to invite you on a new adventure with us to dig deeper into God's word. We've created a coffee club for the Daily Bible Podcast listeners over at Substack. It's called the Daily Bible Pod Coffee Club. Get it? Daily Bible Pod. We have some (laughs) challenges, extra accountability, our journal prompt, and other things to help you think through what you've just read. Basically, a cozy blend of faith, community, coffee, and Bible reading. We have a link to our Daily Bible Pod Coffee Club inside our Facebook page, or simply go to dailybiblepodcoffeeclub.substack.com. Can't wait to see you there. The word of the day is quarrelsome, which means inclined to quarrel, argumentative, or contentious. Um, so wh- why, why would that be the word of the day? <laughs> Cause it's so, it's so interesting. <laughs> it brings these up. The quarrelsome wife is the first thing that comes to mind. Um, as we have these very clear verses mm. that talk about the quarrelsome wife, but also when we look at that, uh, interaction between Saul and Samuel, it ties back to this, you know, Saul is saying, or Samuel saying the Lord is more pleased with when we, what we do is right. And then we offer sacrifices. I think so many times we know what we should be doing, but then we quarrel in our minds like, Oh, mm-hmm. it's not that bad. Or, Oh, it's okay. Like I'm, I'm, I'm like doing this for God, but, but really like, uh, I'm young and I just want to live my life or whatever, whatever it may be. We have those quarrels even in our mind when we are tempted. It's like, we're going to either give into those quarrels or we're going to do what's right. And so that quarreling isn't just the outward quarreling like we see with these women, these wives that are quarrelsome and complaining, but that quarrel often goes in our lives when we know the right thing to do, but we are not wise. Mm. And so uh, these proverbs are not rocket science. We... (laughs) 
can like see them. They're yeah. very do this and don't do this, do this and don't do this. And that quarreling often happens in our mind when we really want to do what we want to do anyway. And so we make excuses for it. But basically, when we want things our way and they don't turn out well, they we not should not be surprised. Like this is so clear in God's word, uh, the right things to do. Well, and I'm thinking there's got to have been some quarrels in the last few days in the Goyer household. You probably, I mean, I'm just thinking of the number of people, number of children in your house. There's some quarreling between them. There's some I have a child quarreling. messaging me right now uh, <laughs> on my phone uh, with a quarrel. So yes, there's just a few quarrels in our house. Just saying. <laughs> well, and I think we all face them every day. I mean, we quarrel in society. I mean, look at social media. You have people who are quarreling over political beliefs. We have people who are quarreling over what they believe the Bible to say. We have people who are quarreling over how they think you should live and you should live the way that they live and not the way you live. We have so much whirling going on. And like you said, it's not just what's out there. Sometimes it's what's inside our heart. And it's only that true wisdom that comes only from God, only from Jesus that calms everything and gives us a sensible heart, which I'm going to mm-hmm. steal from the word of the day yesterday. Yeah. Sensible. Or was that two days ago? I can't remember now, but whatever day it was, we need to have a sensible heart and we need to stop quarreling. I mean, Reading Proverbs isn't the first time that we've read about quarrelsome people. I mean, come on, let's remember the Israelites with Moses and also with God. They were some quarrelsome people. But so on one spectrum, going back, that's the beginning of the Bible of what we started reading. Going towards the other side of the Bible in James, we see these words in James 4. What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war with you? So again, I mentioned on social media, you see, you know, well, and you see this in the news, in any type of media, Mm -hmm. our passions in us might be political. It might be how we live. It might be morality. It might be whatever. You bring that into your home and you see the passions in you like Trisha's kids. And I don't want to pick just on Trisha's kids. It could be any kid or it could actually be me, Michelle. Mm -hmm. And that's the passion in me. I want to live the way I want to live. And I don't care if I'm not considering someone else at times. And so that's the passion in me. And that's wrong. And so going back to James, James says, you desire and you do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly. We're asking in that quarrelsome, that quarrelsome state, and we ask wrongly to spend it on our passions. You adulterous people, exclamation mark. Do not, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whatever, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. So this quarrelsome, this quarrelsome ways, like in Proverbs, we're talking about the quarrelsome wife, but really that quarrelsome could easily be in us if we do not clean our hearts. And because we know that we don't want to be an enemy of God. We do not want to be an enemy God. Go back to that word sensible. Let's have calm hearts. Let's let's clean that quarrelsome Mm -hmm. nature out and let's calm our hearts and let's be level minded and let's go, God, just cleanse me and just put me on a right path, a right path to you. Yeah, and it really takes like we can point and say, well, other people like other people are doing this and other people are quarrelsome and I'm just telling them the truth. Well, if you are quarreling with them, like you, there's a better way than to quarrel with people. Um, and quarrels often come from what we want, whether we want to be right. Uh, we want pleasures like those things that they talked about. Um, but it's important to think about how we connect and talk to each other. We don't have mm-hmm. to be quarrelsome. Um, and it could be at our home or in parts of our lives. Are we helping to build peace? and understanding and good communication or are we arguing and making things more tense um are we stirring up trouble like the kids are always liking to stir up trouble and get each other in trouble um but 
even if we think we're right, it doesn't help us or it doesn't help other people when we are just trying to win a fight. Even if we are trying to share truth, if we're fighting about it, it's not going to lead to any good. We could do it in different ways. So most of the time, it's better to make peace, to listen more, to pick our battles and to pray. Like if there is problems that we need to confront someone with or, or share truth, we can do it in a different ways than being quarrelsome. Well, and I, I love what you just said just a few words ago, a sentence ago, and that was listen more, because that's what we're learning about in Proverbs, Solomon and, and the wise leaders that helped write the book of, of Proverbs are talking about listening. We, I mean, part of wisdom is listening, learning, and putting it into action. And so that's what we need to do is we need to stop. Sometimes when we're in a quarrel, it's like, it's just back up, stop, stop. And let's put that piece in. Let's put those listening skills in and let's just come before God and say, okay, God, um, stop us, stop our hearts. Yeah. Let us, let us not quarrel about this. Let us, uh, listen. And if we're supposed to say something to do it in a more effective way than quarreling. Yeah. Yeah. Well, would you pray for us, Trisha? I will. And our quarreling hearts. Oh, oh, those quarreling hearts. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, I come to you because, Lord, it is so easy to be quarrelsome. Um, mm. And sometimes we may even have right motives or we may think we might have right motives, Lord, but anytime we're, we're stirring up contention and we're fighting, um, that is not your way, Lord. And that I pray that you'll show us how to, um, to listen, to step mm -hmm. back, to look to you, to not quarrel and complain, but to, um, pray and to converse in better ways. Lord, I pray that you will help us, um, not be quarrelsome so that we can be seen as children of children mm -hmm. of light and that we can reflect you, God. And I pray that you will just help us today so that we may glorify you in all that we do. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. So tomorrow we are reading the rest of chapter 22 in Proverbs, that is verses 17 through 29. Then we move on and we read Proverbs 23 and Proverbs 24. And there is a reason for the madness of splitting that Proverbs chapter up. But you'll have to find out by reading. Ooh. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.